after people did a little bit of digging, financial reports indicate that Capcom only has $152 million in the bank. Now, to you and I and many other people out there, $152 million is a shit ton of money. More than enough for you to be able to retire and live an extremely extravagant life off of. But let's be realistic. We're talking about one of the biggest third-party publishers slash developers within the gaming world. A company in gaming that's so big that they've transcended from being a gaming company into pop culture with franchises like Street Fighter and Resident Evil and Mega Man and Duffel May Cry and all sorts of other things. This is a company that's brought us some of the greatest of the great characters, franchises, games just in general. Even if you don't like Capcom, you know of them. And that says something. But $152 million, that's not a good sign. That's not a good indicator going into the next console generation. And this isn't something that just suddenly happened. This has been an arduous journey for them. An uphill journey, no less. But what all goes into this? How do you just get to be a company as big as Capcom and only have $152 million in the bank? To begin with, number one, I guarantee that they're probably feeling really damn foolish, considering that most companies, for, for the most part, most big-time publishing companies, are relatively arrogant. You know, they, they think that they know best, and what they'll put out is obviously the cream of the crop, the best shit ever, and you'll like it no matter what, and your opinion is pretty much moot. Well, that, I would say, is one of Capcom's biggest problems is that they don't listen to their fans nearly as much as they should. They've said that they listen to them, but we all know, especially if you've been tuned to my YouTube channel for I don't know how many fucking years now, you know damn well that they fucked up left and right and pissed off a lot of people to the point that they will not purchase any of their games ever again. I can guarantee there's at least one person watching this that has swore off their titles altogether, or at the very bare minimum said, well, I'm not buying them brand new. I'll buy them used, but not brand new. And I can't exactly blame somebody for having that kind of outlook. I really can't. I mean, con consider this. Within the past console generation, which is kind of weird because we're still sitting in that console generation, but, um... Within the past console generation, how many times have they fucked up? Big. I'll take one of the biggest right off the bat just because of Mighty Number no. 9 coming out, but Mega Man. Not even just Mega Man Legends 3, but Mega Man in general. One of their key franchises that's kept them afloat. One of the reasons why they even had a name for themselves and were put on the map. Rockman or Mega Man, whatever the fuck you want to go and call them. The Blue Bomber, a really big deal. The last four titles got the axe. Many people go and assume that it's more than likely because, well, the man behind Mega Man left the fucking company. And they're doing this to pretty much spite him, maybe? Because, you know, that's his creation, he gives a shit about it, so they're just going, give it the axe, give it the axe, give it the axe, give it the axe. Now, if this is the case, that means that they obviously aren't too concerned with keeping their fan base happy, let alone making money. It's more about pretty much stroking their own ego. Assuming that this is the case. Which, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, that actually, it, this will go and correlate into something else. They've pissed off so much of their top talent that they've left and journeyed off into making their own companies or joining up with other teams. So you're going to go and piss off all of the developers who have created some of the key franchises that made you what you are today, that have made some of the best games that have ever been put out on any platform, whether it was on PC, on handheld, on console, in general, were some of the best things ever. You're going to piss these guys off, these, uh, these men and women who worked hard as fuck for you to create some of the greatest shit ever, and you wonder why they're leaving left and right. Again, arrogance precedes them. It just, it, it kind of fucks my brain up to think that you're pretty much given the keys to the kingdom, yet this is what the fuck you're doing. Now, let's go back to them fucking up with their franchise. I had mentioned Mega Man. 
Now, whether people like to admit this or not, Devil May Cry DMC was a bad idea. Now, you can say right now, hey, I like the game. That's all fine and good. You can say that you'd like the game, but it didn't perform to what they needed. It honestly performed almost half of the amount that they needed. They wanted to hit around 2 million. It only went a little over 1 million. And that's worldwide. Not just in North America or Europe or Japan. That's worldwide. So, and, and keep in mind that they outsource this game. So they're putting up more cash to go and do something like this instead of developing it internally. So, again, they're just taking their money and squandering it for no reason. And when they heard the shit tons, and they acknowledged... They acknowledged the shit ton of people that were pissed off about this. Just like they acknowledged the shit tons of people that were pissed off about Mega Man. But they went ahead anyway because they know better. And you know what them knowing better got them? Not much of shit in the bank. That's what that's gotten them. Here, why don't we go and, and, and flip this in another direction. Let's take a good look at Street Fighter. Or the 50,000 variants of Street Fighter 4. Whether you love Street Fighter 4, you don't give a fuck about Street Fighter 4, you're aware that they've made too many goddamn versions of the same fucking game. And you would think on a certain level that this might be, like, they've got some business savvy, you know, that that's actually kind of smart. If the game sells really well, put on multiple versions of it, and they keep on picking them up and scooping them up, well, that makes sense, because they're just, like, doubling and tripling and even quadrupling their money. No. That's not actually happening. You see, all it is is a waste of fucking time when they could be taking that same engine that they're using for Street Fighter 4 and, oh, I don't know, working on Darkstalkers. You know, something people have really want to go and see? I don't know, why don't you go and make something like Final Fight? You could be going and doing that. Why don't you try taking a really good title like Tatsunoku, uh, I always fuck up the name, versus Capcom. Why don't you take a title like that, which should have done a lot better because it was an absolutely amazing game, make an HD port and put it on PlayStation 3, on PC, Xbox 360. I mean, why, why don't you do something like that? Instead, you just left it there to rot and sit there. And that was pretty much it. Makes no fucking sense. Now... Air, but let's let's keep this train a going. Resident Evil 6 underperformed. We all know why, because it wasn't as great as we wanted it to be. It definitely didn't harken back to the survival horror days that we were thinking that was going to. But we have one scenario out of four that really just made you think, man, this like you know, an actual survival horror game. Holy fucking shit! No, no, that that's. That, that's not really the case. Unfortunately, the entire game played out more like Michael Bay presents Resident Evil. And that's not exactly the most thrilling experience that I can think of. As a matter of fact, when I think of Michael Bay, I just think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, tons of CG, explosions, and the fact that Megan Fox has to be blowing that motherfucker. But I definitely don't like to think of Resident Evil when I go in and put those two together. But, I digress. It underperformed. It underperformed by about 2 million. That's not good. That's not good at all. Now, what's the one thing everybody's been saying? Make it into a survival horror game. What did they do? They just continued doing their own thing. They tried to make it into a ton of different games. Because this was somehow going to help. Having a game that's having an identity crisis. Not the greatest idea. Now, granted, that recently they have said, Oh, you know, we're actually going to focus on Resident Evil being a survival horror game. You know that your company was the one that coined the term survival horror, and then you took the franchise that you coined the term from, and then made it not into that. You turned it into a fucking shooting gallery with the fucking lame-ass monsters. Way to go. Holy shit. That's just stupid as fuck. And ironically... When you do well with Resident Evil Revelations, and you are going back to what made the series as good as it is, most people had already swore off the franchise and were like, yeah, you know, the Resident Evil games after 5 and 6, I was pretty much done. Revelations, is that even any good? You know how many times I heard that? How many times I had to actually tell people, no, you should really check it out. Get, get on any console, get on 3DS, anything that you can. 
pick it up. The game's absolutely fantastic. Really, yeah, but I mean, like, is it scary again? You know how many people have said that? I guarantee there's people even, like, watching us right now, like, it's actually good? Huh. Did not know that. It's kind of interesting. But yes, I swear to you, 100%. Great fucking game. But would you know it after playing the past two titles? Not really. No. You wouldn't have a single fucking clue. And we will never talk about Operation Raccoon City. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I, s I swear that. Ugh. I said it wouldn't talk about it. Anyhow. So, there, there's, you know, Resident Evil, Street Fighter, Mega Man, Dolphin May Cry. For the biggest franchises the company has right now. And you seem to fuck up with every single one of them. So much so that the creator of Mega Man had to go and basically remake Mega Man. <laughs> that, that should say something right there. That should really fucking say something right there. And, and I, I just, I, it blows my fucking mind. I honestly have had people think that, you know, oh, Alpha Mega Sin must absolutely detest Capcom and everything about them. The answer to that is no. I don't absolutely detest and hate Capcom. Capcom's one of my all-time favorite third-party companies and has brought me some of my all-time favorite games that I've ever played. They groomed me into being the gamer that I am today. It's just when I look at what they've become, I feel ashamed and pissed off and angry. That's why I've made so many fucking videos about it. I mean, for fuck's sake, I have a playlist of Capcom rants. A fucking playlist. A fucking playlist. That's how many fucking times. And this isn't one of those things, oh, you're just actually, like, looking for reasons to take digs at them. You gotta be fucking high if you think that. I have legitimate fucking reasons to have the grievances that I do, and I'm not alone when I think this. Because there's thousands, fucking millions of people out there who are obviously just as pissed off as me. So, th then, how about this? All the shit with DLC, all their fucked up ass business tactics, all the shady shit that they've done that's pretty much given them a bad name. Outside of their franchises that they've been fucked up, all, all the shit that they've been fucking up internally between them and the developers, pretty much like encasing them inside of a very fucking closed knit wall telling them, well, you know what, you just have to work on sequel after sequel after sequel after sequel after sequel because that's what the fuck they've been building the house on. But. Look at all the shit that they did with, like, just with DLC in general. On this DLC, all the bullshit that they had just taken out. Do you know how much that had pissed people off? Remember when they were trying to charge for a fucking demo? Because I do. That's, that's the kind of shit that I'm like, wow. How do you not know any better? I mean, sure. I'm just some fucking chucklehead, you know, making videos from my house to go and upload online, but at least I fucking know better. I'm not in charge of a fucking multi-million dollar company, but I would know not to do the shit that you're doing. And do you know how many other fucking people would know not to do that? Holy fucking hell, man. Like, that stuff just, again, everywhere. Just, like, get a fucking Swiffer and just clean up some of that brain matter, because holy fucking balls, dude. But 152 million, that's all you got in the bank. You can't even afford to fuck up anymore. That's where we're at right now with Capcom. They cannot afford to screw up. So, this is one of those situations where they need to listen. They need to really fucking focus. Do you realize how many franchises that they're sitting on that they do nothing with whatsoever and would actually cost them next to nothing to go and produce something for? Do you know how many people would be pounding down their doors that are absolutely excellent at their craft within game development just to be able to work there under the umbrella of Capcom if they were allowed to go and see their vision through for the many franchises or even the fucking new IPs that they could create, yet, here we are, they're, they're outsourcing their shit like fucking imbeciles. Apparently, though, they said that they want to go and hire on 100 new employees, which I say is a very good idea, but you better make damn certain that you're doing something right. You know, like, you have Dead Rising 3 coming out, for example. Game looks fucking phenomenal. You have it only on Xbox One. You, no PC port? 
no PlayStation 4 port, you aren't going to try to make like even a, a little watered down version for PS3, Xbox 360, and the Wii U? You know, you could actually do that. Now, a lot of the games that are coming out right now between, you know, now and the next console generation that's going to be coming up very soon, next couple of months, a lot of people are making multi-platform ones that are on both to go and appease everybody for the people that aren't jumping headlong in because a lot of people won't jump in at least for like a year. That's really the truth. There's a lot of people that just play the waiting game and I don't blame them. But you're going to just release one of your bigger franchises on one system. That's it. One. And especially when you're in the financial hole that you're in right now, you have to be fucking kidding me. Unless this is a timed exclusive, you're fucking retarded. And anybody can be like, oh, you, you this is Xbox One. Hey, shut the fuck up. We're actually talking about a company trying to be business smart. So you want to release your big game on as many platforms as possible to make the most amount of profit. Then you have Lost Planet 3, which is underperforming like a motherfucker. I have, I don't know a single person who even gives a shit about it at all. I really don't. Lost Planet 1 was an alright game. Lost Planet 2, eh, I mean, it was, again, alright. But I feel that the games are just fucking forgettable. So you focus on making a third. Nobody's been jumping all over this shit, yet there's tons of people saying, man, I'd really like to play another Final Fight. How about another Ghouls and Ghosts? Can we have another Breath of Fire? Oh, wait, you're releasing that fucking Gimped-ass version that isn't even a Breath of Fire game on the fucking iOS platform. <laughs> yes. Fucking genius, brilliant work. Absolute brilliance at its finest. You were the definition. You were the definition of brilliance. <laughs> no, you're not. It's all fucking sarcasm. I'm to the point that I just get a fucking canoe and row my ass out of here on the fucking goddamn wave of sarcasm that's coming out of me. But, again, how is it that a company that has so much does so fucking little? How? How is that even possible? And you, it's not like there's people saying that they don't want your games. There's tons of people out there that want to play your games. You're just not putting them out there. I mean, you go and throw a bunch of money into a game like Remember Me. I don't know a single fucking person who's even played it because you didn't market the game for shit. Remember Me? Well... <laughs> The, the name of the, the fucking game is kind of ironic. Like, remember me? No, I don't. Who the fuck are you? Oh, you're that one ga I, Capcom put you out? That's something else. Did anybody else? Huh? Yeah. You, did you? That's... Re remember me. No, not remember... The game's called Remember... No? No? You? Anyone. Sir? Sorry. We all know who the fuck you are. Might as well put the cover of Remember Me onto a fucking milk carton because it'll just come up as fucking missing. But... Then, we go into another area. Their big time focus on the mobile game market in Japan. Makes tons of sense. In Europe and North America, the mobile game market isn't nearly as booming as it is over there. But since they're focusing a lot of time and energy on that, that's one third of like what they should be making. Now, they have to come up with constant fucking, like, triple-A killer apps over there. And the only real notable one that they came up with was, like, Smurf Village, which is kind of like SimCity or Farmville or some shit like that. I have no fucking clue, because I could give two fucks less about it. I could give a fuck about Smurfs, I could give a fuck about a, a game like Farmville or anything like that. You know, I'm not a big social gaming type person. I sit my ass down in front of a screen and play one-player games. Aren't I weird? But... A big focus on that, it may be fine and good, but you need to look at the big picture, the worldwide picture, and see where your demographic, you're making your most money at. That's where your focus should be. 152 million. That's what they've got in the bank. How screwed are they? Seriously, how screwed are they? If you were Capcom right now, I know that I always ask people for like video responses and shit like that, but if you don't feel like making one, at least say in detail what you would do in their situation. Like, what would you do? What do, what steps would you take to try to get over all this fucking financial bullshit? What would you do to rate the ship? What would you do? Seriously. Comments, video responses, what the fuck ever. I know I say it in pretty much every other video, but it is kind of an interesting topic to think about. You know, 
you're put into the spot of the chairman, what do you do now? You know, that's, that's a big fucking chair to go and sit in and big shoes to fill, but what? Anyway, so you've heard my two cents on the entire situation and stuff like that. I truly hope that they don't go under, but I hope that at the very least that they've been humbled a little bit and they look at all their past failings, all the things that have been fucking them over, pretty much their own decision making, and they look at all this as a big time learning experience that, granted, is going to hurt quite a bit, but it's not going to completely damn them if they're smart. So anyway, this is Alpha Omega Sin, as always, nerds, nerdettes, and gamers, game the fuck on.